friends, it's Lisa, and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book tag, the classic, the staple, if you will. <laughs> so I'm going to be answering some questions about my reading year so far, the things I loved, the things I haven't loved, and discussing maybe some reading plans for the second half of the year. This is just such a fun tag that I feel like everyone does every year. It's so much fun. It's just such a staple, and I love that so many people do it every year. This is my fourth year doing this tag, which is kind of wild, and I'm just excited to get into the questions. And I will say I'm going to give you a warning that this is probably going to get a little chaotic, <laughs> and also a disclaimer, it is currently the 22nd of June. We are not technically quite at the halfway point of the year so far, but I'm having to film this a little bit earlier than anticipated because today is the last day where it's going to be sunny and there's going to be like decent lighting. I'm not kidding when I tell you the extended forecast for where I live is rain and thunderstorms. It's literally the next two weeks, just that. So I wanted to take the opportunity when I had good lighting to film this video and you probably don't care about any of that, but just know it's probably going to be chaotic because I wasn't planning on filming this video today. I looked quickly through the questions, but I don't really have my answers planned out or anything. So that's why we're standing. I'm going to be able to run to my bookshelves when I need to. I don't know what this is going to be. It's going to be chaotic, I'm sure, but I feel like that's just, you know, the general vibe here. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be checking in on my reading year so far this year. But before we get into the actual tag and the actual questions, I want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, which is Ana Luisa. So Ana Luisa is a high quality jewelry brand, but at a fraction of the price as other high-end jewelry companies. They have pieces starting at just $39 and also something that I think is so important and something that I love to talk about when talking about this brand is that they are carbon neutral and climate neutral certified, which means that they offset 100% of their carbon footprint, which I just think is so great, so important, so nice to know the brands that you are putting your money into and supporting are doing what they can to help the planet and help the environment. I just think that that is so important. Also, their jewelry is long lasting and tarnished resistant. And as someone who's had pieces from Ana Luisa for close to two years now, some of my pieces are, I think, about two years old. I can tell you that that is true. They still look brand new. There are certain pieces that I wear from them almost every single day and they still look brand new and they look amazing. So I 100% recommend their jewelry if you're looking for something long lasting, something that's going to hold up. If you, you know, wear it in the shower or you're just a, maybe a super active person, like they're going to hold up to that. So I do have a few pieces that Ana Luisa sent to me to share with you all. So I am wearing a couple of them. I'm wearing these earrings. These are the Percy earrings and I think that these are so stunning. I feel like these are the type of earrings that can kind of be dressed up or dressed down depending on what you want to wear them to. It definitely can go either way. And I love that it has that like double hoop kind of thing. It looks like you have two piercings when in reality I only have one. I also have this bracelet. This is the Harry bracelet, which I'm not gonna lie, love the name live laugh love harry styles am i right <laughs> i love how like dainty and delicate it is and how simple it is it's just like a simple gold chain with those little gold balls throughout it and i really really love it i think it'll be really pretty to stack with other bracelets and then i also have these earrings these are the scarlet pearl earrings and these i feel like are maybe a little bit more fancy i definitely think you could wear them in a more casual way as well but i'm really excited to wear these to maybe some special events i have a wedding that i'm going to later this year so maybe i'll wear them then i don't know we will see <laughs> so yeah i know i i've talked about Ana luisa in many videos before and pretty much if you see me wearing jewelry in a video it's Ana luisa i highly recommend the brand i absolutely love all of the pieces i've ever gotten from them they're super long lasting great quality and i just think that they kind of have styles for everybody so if you're looking to get yourself or a loved one some new New jewelry, maybe some new pieces for the summertime. I will have a link to Anna Luisa's website down below at the top of my description. And you can also use my code with love 20 to get 20% off of your order. But thank you so much once again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. And now we can get into what is probably going to be the chaotic mid-year book tag. <laughs> so I will have the original creators of this tag linked below. And I also think some of these questions came from Books and Lala's mid-year book tag from like a couple years ago as well. I feel like throughout the years this tag has really evolved and people have changed and added questions as we've gone on so I think I have a bunch of questions from a bunch of different people <laughs> but the first question is the best book that you have read so far this year. 
Is anyone surprised? <laughs> yeah, I definitely think Happy Place has to be my favorite book of the year so far. I feel like right now I'm on an uphill streak with my ratings, but honestly this year I've not been having the best luck with five star reads. I really haven't had that many, but this is like my most recent five star, I think, or one of my more recent five stars, and this is definitely my favorite book of the year so far. You're following Harriet and Wynn, who were this couple throughout college, and they got engaged, and everyone just thought that they were going to be together forever, but then they actually break up, and through certain circumstances, they don't actually tell their group of friends that are, like, super close from college that they've broken up. So when this group of friends go on their annual trip to Maine during the summer, Harriet and Wynne have to pretend that they are still together in front of their friends. So we got a little second chance romance, a little fake dating, and I just loved it so much. I felt so seen by Harriet as a character, and I also just really loved their relationship. I loved Wynne. I loved the friend group and that dynamic. I loved the setting in Maine. It made me happy and it made me laugh, but it also completely destroyed me and had me sobbing the last like 100 pages. So I just really love this and it's definitely like my favorite book of the year so far. Not that it has much competition, but you know. Also, there's like no good place for me to put anything down. I have my floor basically. So I'm probably just going to be running around like this whole entire video. So sorry about that. But the next question is the best sequel you have read so far this year. I also have my laptop ready to go because I have a pea brain. Oh, did I say I've read 48 books so far this year. My reading goal is 70. I've read 48 books. Like I said, we're not completely at the halfway point of the year yet, but I think I'll probably get to 50 by the end of June, which is just very pleasing. <laughs> but right now I'm at 48 books read. And the best sequel that I've read so far this year, I think one of them has to be Heartless by Elsie Silver. This is the second book in the Chestnut Springs romance series. They're all like companion romance books. Yeehaw vibes, really fun. In this particular book, you're following Willa and Cade. And Cade is very reluctantly looking for a new nanny for his son. And and Willa is actually like the best friend of the main character from the first book in this series. So that is how she kind of gets this job offer. So she ends up moving in with Cade to be the nanny for his son. The like family dynamic that grows between them is just so fun to witness and so precious. And Cade is really like against Willa being there for a while. And it's definitely like a grumpy sunshine dynamic, which is really fun and another one of my favorite tropes. So I really loved this. Yeah, that probably has to be my favorite sequel, I suppose, even though it's kind of a a companion just because the series that I've continued on with I don't really feel like I've had the best luck with them. I will say uh, Morning Star is that the one that I liked? Yeah by Pierce Brown. That's the third book in the Red Rising series. This was definitely my favorite of the original trilogy. Those are the only ones I've read so far but that was when I actually felt like really invested in what was going on and in the characters and I was very stressed and very engaged that whole book. Like that was definitely my favorite one of the original trilogy so I think that could also count for this question. The next question is a new release you haven't read yet but want to and I think for me the one that I'm like the most excited to get to that's already been released is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. This is the Priory of the Orange Tree prequel. I don't even think I could begin to explain what that series is about. There's dragons. Priory is sapphic. I don't know if A Day of Fallen Night is sapphic. I hope it is. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a high fantasy novel with dragons and there's a lot of political aspects going on. And A Day of Fallen Night is a prequel. I think it's set quite a while before Priory. So I hope I don't need to reread Priory to read it because Priory's chonky. I don't know if I have time to do that. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't read A Day of Fallen Night yet and I'm really excited to. I just haven't like gotten my hands on a copy yet because that book is expansive so I haven't bought it yet but hopefully I'll get it soon and be able to read it soon because I really want to. That's probably like the 2023 release that I'm the most excited about that's already come out. There's definitely a lot and I've made videos um, throughout the year so far talking about my anticipated releases so if you want to check those out I'll have those linked below. I just locked my phone. I still need the questions. Hello. The next question is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year and I have two answers. I don't even need to look because these are the ones that immediately came to mind. One is Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. I love Elizabeth Acevedo. I've loved everything she's written, everything I've read from her, and this is going to be her first like adult novel, and I'm just so excited for it. It sounds like it's going to be heartbreaking, and I can't wait for it. And then the other anticipated release for the second half of the year has to be Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. Of course. <laughs> this is Cassandra Clare's like first novel outside of the Shadowhunter world. Other than the, I think the series she did with Holly Black, that like middle grade series, this is her first book by herself that is outside of the Shadowhunter world. And I'm 
very intrigued by it. I know for me, like, the Shadowhunter world is so comforting to me. It's so familiar. I love those characters. And so even when I read a book in that world that maybe isn't as good as other ones, it's still comforting and I still enjoy it and have a good time. But Swordcatcher isn't going to have that to fall back on. And it's really going to show me whether, you know, her writing and her characters and everything works for me outside of the Shadowhunter world, I should say. I think this could go either way for me, but I'm so intrigued by it. I'm so excited to read something by her that isn't in the Shadowhunter world. Plus, I think this is like a new adult fantasy and it's a high fantasy so it's a little bit different than the shadow hunter world as well so i'm really excited about it i'm very intrigued to see what i think the next question is my most read genre this year or a genre i read more than usual let me consult story graph and also my reading spreadsheet <laughs> i mean if i had to guess i would say romance is probably my most read genre okay yeah on my spreadsheet it says romance is my most read genre 33.3 percent of my reads this year have been romance and that is followed closely by fantasy at 29 too, but let me also check Storygraph. Storygraph is also showing romance <laughs> and then contemporary is following that. So yeah, it also really bothers me that they count young adult as a genre. Young adult is not a genre. It's an age range. <laughs> so yeah, romance is definitely my number one red genre this year. That is not surprising really at all, uh, considering I've really gotten into romance over the past couple of years. And then other than romance, I've been reading a lot of contemporary and fantasy, which also feels like pretty typical for me. So I don't think there's really anything that I'm branching out with. There's nothing that I'm reading more than usual. The next question is my biggest disappointment this year. I'm so sad. And like, it's so sad that I automatically know what it is. Like, I don't even need to look at Goodreads. I don't want to talk about it. Can we pretend like it doesn't exist? <laughs> yeah, it's got to be Chain of Thorns, y'all. <laughs> so here's the thing with this book. I gave it four stars, which doesn't sound bad, right? But in my mind, I know that that is a very generous rating because I had so many problems with this book and I was just expecting it to be five stars, amazing conclusion to the series. Chain of Gold is possibly, like it definitely is one of my favorite Shadowhunter books. It's literally in my profile picture for this channel. I love it so much. Also Chain of Iron is like right behind it. I loved the first two books in this series so much and I just expected this to be on the same level and it was not. <laughs> and I think it just makes me so sad because I still love these characters so much. And like I said, the Shadowhunter world is such a comfort for me. So like it has a lot of things that I going into it was like already going to just love naturally. But a lot of the choices that Cassandra Clare made within the plot and like certain character relationships and dynamics, I just really didn't like. It was really slow for a part of it. There was also this like love triangle thing that went on for way too long, considering we all knew how that was going to end. Like it was not on the same level as the Infernal Devices love triangle. Like it wasn't even close. Not the same thing at all. And I just don't get why this woman has to include a love triangle in every single series. She can let it go. <laughs> She's done it successfully a couple of times, but like like there's also been some that have not worked out like this one. I don't know. I just, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to talk about it. I did a whole like hour and a half long vlog on it. So if you want to know all my like spoilery in-depth thoughts, I'll have that there. This is probably more like a three star if I'm being real with myself, but that just makes me so sad because I love these characters. I love this world. I just was so disappointed by a lot of the choices that were made for this final book in the series. So the next question is the biggest surprise, and I feel like I have a couple of answers for this. Oh, you know what? I think my number one answer for this is That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. This is like a fantasy romance a little novella and one night this girl the main character she gets drunk she runs into a demon and saves his life then he ends up like confronting her and telling her like hey like this woman that you all worship that you think is saving you from like me and other demons and monsters is actually a problem and we are not as bad as she makes us seem so we gotta go destroy her. So the two of them go on this little journey. There's a romance, but it's also really fun. There's a really fun plot. Like it's not just like thrown to the wayside for the romance. Like there's actually a really fun plot as well. There's really great side characters. And I just didn't expect to love this as much as I did. It was just really fun. The romance was really great. I loved the characters. It was so funny. At first I wasn't sure about the humor. Like when I first got into it, I was like, this might be a bit too corny and cheesy for me, but it actually works so well well and become so endearing and I loved it. I gave it a 4.5 stars but I think that this is one of those books I think I need to go back and raise to a 5 because there's nothing I disliked about it. It was just so much fun and I just wasn't expecting to 
love it so much and feel so connected to a romance and characters, especially in a novella. So yeah, that was definitely a surprise for me. And also one that I just finished recently, Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I kind of did the same thing with this book. I originally gave it a 4.5 stars, but I think I'm going to raise it to a 5 because I loved this book so much. And the reason I find that so surprising is because when I read like the description of the book on Goodreads, like I was interested in it, but it didn't really give me a whole lot to work with. And it wasn't the most like attention grabbing description, I guess. So I just kind of went into it being like, I'm sure this will be enjoyable enough. But now I'm like, I think it's a five star new favorite. So that was definitely surprising. You have these two main characters, Iris and Roman, who both work at this newspaper and they're trying to get this promotion. They both want this certain job. So they're kind of rivals. But then through some magical connection when Iris, you know, was trying to write letters to her brother who is fighting in this war against the gods, which is a whole other side plot that's really interesting. She's writing these letters to her brother and she's slipping them under her wardrobe and then they're disappearing and showing up in Roman's bedroom as well. And so they start that like connection between them. So they're like rivals at work, but they're falling in love through these letters. And it was just so fun and cute, but then also like devastating. Like I say fun, but there were moments where I was crying and there's like this war going on with the gods, like I said, and there's some devastating moments with that. But there's also just a really great cast of characters and the romance is really what like takes the cake with this one. It was just so good and so surprising because I didn't really expect a whole lot from it just based off of the description. And both of these authors I've never read from before. So I just went into it, you know, for the first time, reading their writing for the first time and was so surprised that I really like connected with both of these stories and these characters and the romances. Very different vibes, but I really loved both of them and was very surprised by that. Or I should say I was surprised by how much I liked them. I had a feeling I would enjoy both of these books, but I didn't expect to love them as much as I did. The next question is favorite new author. So this can be either a debut author or a new author to you. So I'm just going to quickly go through my Goodreads and list off authors that I've read from this year that are new to me and definitely authors that I want to read more from going forward. So Erin Morgenstern is definitely one of them. I'll also put on the screen the book that I read by each author. So you know what made me want to read more from them. Uh, Gabrielle Zevin, Joya Goffney, Elsie Silver, Bolu Babalola, Kimberly Lemming, Margaret Rogerson is definitely one that I want to read more from Alexis Hall, Abby Jimenez, and Raquel Marie, Rebecca Yaros, Rebecca Ross, both of the Rebeccas. <laughs> so yeah, definitely have a lot of authors I've read from for the first time this year and want to continue to read from. So that's very exciting. So the next question is newest fictional crush. And I definitely have to say Nathaniel Thorne from Sorcery of Thorns. This man Thank you so much. That is all. <laughs> Just him existing was definitely a highlight of this book for me, but also his like relationship with Elizabeth, the main character. Oh, so good. Love him. Um, I'd also have to say Wynn from Happy Place, I think. He's just a precious bean and I just, I loved him. I loved him a lot. Oh, also Malachi from Honey and Spice. The only man ever. I think I might have just said that about Nathaniel Thorne, but these are the only men ever. <laughs> I was so obsessed with him when I read this book. Every interaction that he had with the main character just made me want to scream. So definitely him as well. <laughs> Newest favorite character. I don't know why I keep putting this book down. It's just going to keep popping up. This I think happened with all my rage last year. I feel like whatever my favorite book is of the year, I just keep bringing it up throughout this tag. But I think Harriet has to be one of my newest favorite characters just because of how much I related to her. I felt really seen by Harriet. And in some ways it was like uncomfortable to read at times because I felt like certain things about myself were being like displayed for anyone to read this book, but I absolutely loved her because of that. I think Emily Henry really does a good job of writing characters and moments that feel really real and for a lot of people to relate to. Like I've related to some of her other characters and things in her other books before, but Harriet I think is the character that I've related to the most. And for that reason, she's definitely a new favorite character for me. The next question is a book that made you cry. Once again, we're going to talk about Happy Place by Emily Henry. I'm not exaggerating when I think I cried the last like 100 pages of this book. It was kind of ridiculous, but I just couldn't stop once I started. <laughs> and also, even though, like I said, this book was disappointing, Chain of Thorns did make me cry quite a bit. There were still some like upsetting and emotional things that happened. And like, even though this book by itself was disappointing, like I still loved these characters and was really like invested in them. So when emotional things would happen, 
I would get emotional. And there were even moments where like, I would stop reading this book and I would think about what happened and I would start crying. So these two definitely made me cry. Also, Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry by Joya Goffney, which crying is in the title, which is fitting. <laughs> to be honest, this book probably could have been counted in the like biggest surprise category as well, because this is like a YA contemporary. I wasn't really expecting going into it that I would love it as much as I did, but I gave it five stars and it definitely made me cry. It was a lot more emotional than I was anticipating. It had its lighthearted, fun, silly moments and like cute romantic moments, but it also had a lot of emotional moments as well. And so I was crying reading this audiobook. So definitely that one as well. And then kind of in a very like different sort of situation, very different from those other books, Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner also made me very emotional. This is a memoir of Michelle like sharing what it was like losing her mom to cancer. So there is a lot of discussion on loss and grief and just like the lead up to it and then kind of how she dealt with it after the fact. Like it was very emotional and I definitely cried a lot while listening to the audiobook. And Michelle Zahner narrates the audiobook herself. So like hearing her her narrate her own story was also just another layer of the emotional impact that it had on me. So definitely had some books that have made me cry this year. I feel like there's more, but I'm counting the ones that like I had tears, you know? Also my reread of Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. There were tears. And that was very like surprising because I knew what was going to happen because I read it before, but oh my god, I was a sobbing mess by the end of that book. <laughs> so the next question is a book that made you happy. So let me go and grab it. <laughs> so A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall is definitely a book that made me happy. This also did make me cry, but I don't know if I had like full on tears streaming down my face, <laughs> but this is a historical romance and it's like a friends to lovers type of story. It's really emotional because Viola is trans and when she was presumed dead in the war, she took that as an opportunity to live as herself. So her best friend, Justin, thinks that his best friend is dead and Viola has not told him who she is and they start to reconnect. And then it's just, it was so emotional, but so good. And it just made me so, so happy to see this representation in a historical romance. And I just loved the characters. I loved the romance. And like I said, it made me quite emotional, but it also just made me so happy. It filled me with so much joy. So I absolutely loved this. Also, I will say that time I got drunk and saved a demon also made me very happy just because it was so silly at points. And like the humor, like I said, was just so like corny and cheesy, but so funny. It was just like, it really spoke to my type of humor. I just loved it and had such a good time. So that one also made me quite happy. So the next question, is my favorite book adaptation that I've seen this year and I don't think I've seen any. I know there's been a couple that have come out like I know the Queen Charlotte Bridgerton spinoff came out and there is a novelization of that show and it's a Bridgerton spinoff which is based off of books but I haven't seen that yet and I need to because I feel like I'm gonna love it. Other than that though I don't know if there's been any others that have come out or any that I've been interested in. There are a few that are coming out later though in the second half of the year that I'm very excited about. One that's coming out pretty soon I think is Nimona, which is based off of the graphic novel. I read that last year and absolutely loved it. So I'm really excited for this adaptation. The animation style looks really cute. And there's a lot of scenes that look like directly taken from the panels of the graphic novel. So I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be really fun. And of course, I'm excited for Heartstopper season two. I loved season one so much. I thought it's different from the graphic novels, but it got the heart of the story and just the whole vibe of the graphic novels so well. It captured that so well and I'm so excited for season two because I think the whole like Paris trip that happens in volume three of the graphic novels is happening this season and that's like one of my favorite parts of the the series the book series so I'm really excited about it it's gonna be so good so wholesome and also probably gonna make me sob like always <laughs> and another adaptation that I'm very intrigued by is the red white and royal blue adaptation is it a movie is it a show? I think it's a movie. I'm not sure. I'm down for a rom-com though, a silly goofy rom-com. I read the book. I liked it. I feel like I, I think I gave it five stars. It's probably more of like a four to be realistic, but I did have a good time with it. So I'm excited to see the adaptation and see if it's good or not. I don't know. It's definitely intriguing to me. Some of the like pictures that have come out, it seems like they're capturing it well. So I don't know. I'm definitely intrigued to watch it interested to see if I like it. The next question is not really to do with my reading year. It's more so to do with like my channel and everything. It's my favorite video that I've done so far this year. So while I was waiting for my camera battery to charge, I did do a quick look through my channel and I recently uploaded a vlog when I went to Bar Harbor, but it was also just like a normal reading vlog. And I also went to a, like a Louis Tomlinson concert within that vlog. Like it just had a lot of fun things on top of the reading vlog aspect. I feel like I was also like getting out of my reading slump. So I'm really happy with that vlog. 
I really enjoyed doing that one. Also like not bookish at all, my Taylor Swift Eras Tour concert vlog. I also really enjoyed doing that and editing that. Again, that was a vlog where it was mostly just concert videos, but I had so much fun like preparing for the concerts and being able to document that and also like being able to share that with anyone who maybe didn't get to go to the tour. It was just such a fun vlog for me to do and to edit. And then also I really enjoyed my vlog that I did at the very beginning of the year. It was my first reading vlog of the year and that's why I loved it. I love being able to document like my first reads of the year and like setting my goals. And I think that was when I set up my my TBR shelf that's on my headboard above my bed. So I just really liked that vlog and how it came out. So yeah, definitely I've had some videos that I'm pretty happy with. I feel like any themed vlogs also that I've done this year, I've been happy with. I'm currently working on another themed vlog. So I just really enjoy doing those types of videos. So those are also favorites. The next question is the most beautiful book that you have bought or received this year. So I do have a couple. I definitely think my special editions that I've acquired this year are some of my favorites. So I did get the Cursed Fairy Lou edition. This is by Marissa Meyer. This is the sequel to Gilded and I do have the Gilded one as well. Am I, am I even pointing to it? I don't know. I'm looking at a mirror behind my camera. This is just, this is not professional in any capacity. <laughs> but yeah, I have the Gilded one and so I wanted to get the Matching Curse one when this released and I think I bought this. Did I get this this year? Yeah, I think I did. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> What's even happening in my brain right now? I just think it's so stunning. I was a little hesitant because I'm definitely more of a gold person than a silver person, but I actually really like the silver and like the sprayed edges are also very stunning and I'm just happy to have like a matching set. And then also I got the special edition of Sea Sparrow by Kristen Kishore. This is also by Fairy Loot and this was a gift from Darian. I think this was a birthday gift, but it just, it came and arrived earlier this year. And this is so, so stunning. I love these covers of the Graceling series. And I really hope I like this because I have this special edition and like the normal US hardcover version of it. So I have two editions of this book. So hopefully I continue to like this series. <laughs> but this is another one. It has like the orange sprayed edges, which I think is so, it's so like bright and fun. But yeah, I definitely think these are the most beautiful books I've received this year. I feel like Fairy Loot special editions, they're always just going to come out on top. You know, Fairy Loot, they're, they're so good. They know how to get you. <laughs> All right, we're down to the final question. And I never know how to answer this question. It is what books do you want to read by the end of the year? all of them. <laughs> I mean, specifically, I would love to get to my five star predictions that I made at the beginning of the year. I would love to get to most of them by the end of the year. There's some exciting books on there. I've only, I think, read three of the 10 on that list. So I definitely need to make some progress there. But I don't think I'm going to do five star predictions going forward. So even if I don't finish them by the end of the year, I'll do a follow up video whenever I can. But I would like to read most of them this year. And I definitely want to work on reading more of my physical TBR and continuing on with some series. So some series that I have on there that I need to continue the um, These Violent Delights series by Chloe Gong. I need to read the second one. I would love to continue on with the Poppy War series. I have only read the first one, but I really loved it. So I need to continue on with that series. We also have Vengeful by V. Schwab. I'm also not going to get the books and editing me is going to be so mad that I have to put the pictures <laughs> in editing. Sorry. <laughs> but Vengeful by V. Schwab is the sequel to Vicious, which I loved Vicious so much. So I'm excited to read the sequel. Also the Legend Board series. I need to do a reread of Legendborn before I read Bloodmarked, but I really want to read those. I really want to continue on with the Graceling series. And there's lots of books that I don't own that I want to read. So there's there's so many. I don't know. This question, I never really know how to answer it because it's like, I want to read all of the books. What do you mean? <laughs> but yeah, that was actually the final question for the mid-year book tag. So I will have the original creators linked below again, as always, for you to check out. And I will also have my videos from previous years linked below, my previous mid-year book tags in case you're curious and want to check them out. And if you've made it this far into the video, I would love for you to comment your best and worst books of the year so far. I just will be so curious to see what your answers are. Also, once again, thank you so much to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. Don't forget, you can check out the link at the top of my description to check out their website, do some shopping, and you can use my code withlove20 to get 20% off of your order. But yeah, it was a bit chaotic because we weren't prepared, but that is going to be it for this year's mid-year book tag. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.